Last week we started talking about sin. And how when I sin against you, it's like I'm handing you a rock. If I take your purse and move it without asking you, I'm handing you a small rock. Small sin, right? And then if uh, we went on to say, you know, if I, uh, if I moved your purse and then took a 20 out of it without telling you, that that would be a more significant sin that I was handing to you, something with a little bit more weight. And that if I then took your um, ID and, and stole your identity and made off with your social security check, that would be that sucker, which I'm just not going to attempt to lift because it hurt enough getting it up there. But it, the, when we began talking about if you are sinned against, you are given this rock, we got to choose what to do with it. Do we hold on to all these sins and carry around this weight? Or do we begin to learn how to let go of them? Let go of these sins and just be able to lighten the load. And we talked about uh, the small rocks first last week, right? We remember, assume, and pray. That's what we started with. Remember, when someone does me wrong, someone cuts me off in traffic, remember, I'm not perfect either. Assume that the waitress who didn't give me good service probably was up all night with a sick kid. Assume the best, that they're not out to get me. And then pray for that person's welfare. And when we start doing those things, remove, remember, assume, and pray, that that's a practical way to start to let go of all these little sins committed against us and lighten the load. However, the question remains, what do you do about this sucker? This is not something you just toss down and let go of and move on. When we are sinned against and someone hands us one of these, what's next? Well, that's what we're going to look at today. We're using a wisdom from Adam Hamilton's little book on forgiveness and uh, as you can see it is literally a little book if any of this intrigues you and you want to learn some more read this book it really is helpful but uh, he is the one who, 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 who advises us what we are to do you know and, and these big issues you know the thing about these big issues is if, if we ignore them They'll weigh us down, and these are the things that impact our relationships. The issues like this, if we ignore them and pretend they're not there, these are the things that make husband and wife not smile when they come in the room. These are the things that make it so when someone walks in the room, you're not happy for them to be there. That stress uh, friendships, that damage uh, communities, that hurt churches. And we've got to figure out what we're going to do. And so the first thing you do when someone hands you one of these, the first thing to do might be the single hardest part of it. When some, someone hands you a sin like this, well, usually people have one of three responses. What do you do? You either lash out back at them, right? Hurt them back. They hurt me. You can hurt them back. Or walk away. Or some people cry. That seems to be the, the three responses I see. Maybe there's, a, there's another one, but that's what I see. And the first and the hardest thing to do is to not make it worse. If someone hands you one of these, don't lash out and make it worse. Because if I hand you one of these and you hand me one right back, you know, you're rotten so-and-so. If I immediately say, well, so are you, uh, what are we doing? We're just stacking up rocks, right? Because that's what happens. If, we, if I hurt you and then you hurt me and I hurt you, eventually if you have enough of these floating around, you're not carrying them on your back. What you're doing is you start building walls, don't you? And so that's the first thing, is you don't make it worse. That, uh, don't do the whole eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, because if you do that, then we all end up blind and needing dentures. And, but no matter what, how it turns out, if, if someone hurts you, at, at some point you're going to sit down and have to decide what you're going to do with it. You're going to have this time of calm, you're going to decide what is next. And, and Jesus has some very uh, practical advice on what do you do when someone has hurt you badly. He says in Matthew 5, if you have hurt someone and you realize it, you drop everything and you go take care of it. What he specifically says is if you're on your way to make your offering and you realize you've hurt someone, you put your offering down and you go get right with them before you, you make your offering. And when he says this, he's talking to folks who are living 10 miles from Jerusalem. And everyone there knows that Jerusalem is where you go to worship. And you walk to worship. And so if you, go, you walk 10 miles to worship, you're ready to go make your offering, and you realize you're wrong with somebody, and you need to go, and you've got to hike 10 miles back 
to get right with them before you can hike 10 miles back the third time to finally make your offering. That's a high level of commitment that Jesus is demanding of those who follow him. This is not, you know, I'll get to it later. This is, go out of your way. If, you're wrong, if you've wronged someone, you go out of their way. You walk 10 miles by foot to go find the person you've wronged and, and sit down and, and ask them, do I owe you an apology? Those words, I, the best words I have found for handling this, do I owe you an apology? Have I, am I, have I done wrong by you? And, and this can go badly. We can read this and we can say things like, uh, you know, people just need to put up with me. That's just how I am. But, you know, we just can't say that as Christians, can we? Jesus loves you just the way you are, but Jesus is not done with you. Or with me, for that matter. We, we cannot say, you know what, people just... If, someone, if we realize someone's offended by us, we, we can't just say, you know, that's just how I am, because you're right. That is just how we are. But we are called to be better. And so we go, we find the person, we sit down one-on-one. -on -one. Never helps to be in a group. Just do sit down one-on-one. -on -one. Do I owe you an apology? And then start rebuilding. That's what's Jesus' Jesus's advice for us. If I have sinned against, if I realize I've done you wrong, Jesus' advice is you go and you find that person. Well, then the flip of that is what Jesus addressed in Matthew 18. If you have been hurt by someone, Jesus says you go and find them. Now, this might feel counterintuitive. If I have been hurt by, by someone, let's say Rick is just out for me and he's just done me wrong. He plowed into my... Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if, if Rick has done me wrong, why should I be the one to have to go find Rick? He's the one done me wrong. Shouldn't he have to come find me? Well, let's just take a moment to acknowledge the truth about what usually happens. When Rick's done me wrong, does Rick always realize it? I love you, Rick, but <laughs> you just have to be a great example, right? My line of sight today. But that's the truth, right? If when so ever, this is my mom's advice to my wife when we were getting married was, Andy will change, but you might have to point it out to him by hitting him up the upside the back of the head with a two-by-four, right? Sometimes we are just flat oblivious to the problems we cause. So if someone has done us wrong, Jesus says, you go and find that person, because if they haven't found you already, you prob they probably don't realize it. So if, Jesus, if someone has done you wrong, Jesus tells us in Matthew 18, you go and you find them. And you sit down, and you say, you know what, I'm hurt by this. Not, you're a jerk, that doesn't help. I'm hurt by this. I'm bothered by this. This really didn't, didn't work. And then if that doesn't help, you go, you get a friend, you get a pastor, you get that a PPR, you get someone to go help. And then if that doesn't work, you get a couple more people involved to try to build up and rebuild something. But this, again, can go badly, right? Just as if you're going to go find someone, if you're the one who's sinned, that can go off the rails. This can go off the rails as well. If you have been sinned against, if someone has hurt you, Again, Rick done me wrong. If I start going to Wayne and, and Charlie and, and I go over to Penny and I start telling everyone, you know, you can't believe what a son of a gun this guy is. <laughs> what am I doing there? He's handed me a rock and what am I doing to him? I'm, handing, I'm just building up the problems, right? If, if when we start gossiping with everyone else except in doing everything but talk to the one person who's done us wrong, what we're doing is we're fracturing community. We're building up those walls. We're, we're breaking... And, and what happens is, the more that I talk to you about how much I don't get along with Rick, then we're sort of... You're going to see that problem, and then that's, that's going to be the assumption of how we're going to relate from now on. And, and so... It, that's how it goes off the rails. If we talk to everyone but the person who has hurt us, we just make the problem worse. We're not actually solving it. We're just... And, and now there is a difference. If, if I go to you... And I say, you know, Penny, can you help me figure out how to get right with Rick? Do I need to talk with Rick at work? Do I need to, do I need to go find him? Do I need to go buy him a beer? Do I need to go golf with him? That's different, right? But if I'm just talking, you know, Penny, sweet Jesus, you just can't. That's a different matter, right? And so this can go off the rails as well. But Jesus lays this out. Matthew 18, if, if you've been wrong, you, you run to that person, you find them, and you start getting that rebuilt. You get that worked out. And, and so between the two, what we have is this great image. I love this. Matthew 5 and Matthew 18, if you have sinned against someone, you run to them, and you get it fixed. And if someone has sinned against you, you run to them, and you get it fixed. And, and so what I hope happens 
is when I finally call Rick and I say, Rick, something's wrong. Rick says, you know, Andy, I was about to call you because we're running towards each other because we want to get this worked out. Rick, thanks you for not hurting me. You're a great, <laughs> great example. <laughs> But that, that Matthew 5 and Matthew 18 lay that out, and that's a great mental image that people are just running towards each other to get these things worked out. That doesn't actually address the harder position we find ourselves in, though. Because what do the rest of you all do when two people are at odds? What do the rest of you all do? Because that's what happens, right? You know when, when something's broken in the community... It sort of percolates. People get a sense of it. People know that there is something else going around. And what do you find yourself doing? That, that, this is the part of forgiveness I have been thinking and pondering about most. Because it's the place that I find myself in. And, and, and when someone starts ranting or, or gossiping or, or talking smack about someone, at first there's, there's usually this sense of, why am I hearing this? And you don't know quite what to say. And then you realize if you, if you don't say something, you're kind of approving it. But you don't know quite what to say because you don't want to get involved because it's not your problem and you can't fix it. So what, what can you say in that moment where someone is telling you about so-and-so? What's the best thing you can say? This, well, this is, this is what I figured. You can, say, you, know, you can say to the person, you know what, I love you both. And I'll be praying that you two, you, the two of you can sit down and work that out. And then you change the topic. Ain't this been a really cold May? <laughs> you know, because I love this family so much, I can't wait for the two of you to be able to sit down and reconcile and rebuild. And, and what, are you gonna, what are you up to this weekend? I mean, you just, I, I'm praying for you to, to work that out. And uh, man, how's that weather? Just... Make it clear you're praying for them to reconcile and rebuild and then stop it and change the topic. That's the best I can figure. And if you all have any other better advice, I am all ears. But uh, that, that's kind of what Jesus lays out. When, when people are offended, when people are hurt, this is what Jesus lays out. Matthew 5, if you've offended someone, you run to them. And you, you rebuild, you, do I owe you an apology? What do I need to do to rebuild this? Uh, let me hold that thought. Matthew 18, uh, if you have been offended, you run to that person and, and you sit down and, and you get that worked out. And then we as the community, what we're saying, if it comes up is, I'm looking forward to how that can get reconciled. I'm praying for you. How's the weather? And so that kind of lays out the three roles we can play. Offended, offendee, or community. Yes, P Penny, what's up? About to okay. hold that thought, okay. uh, because that does happen. Um, often people don't see the sin they have committed. That, that that's the. Eve did not realize eating the apple was a problem and Adam jumped right in. Right? Uh, it's the sin that we don't see that is the scariest. <clears throat> and that ends up being part of the issue of rebuilding. Once one person has been offended, there, there's a need to sit down and to rebuild. And rebuilding, re reconciliation is a big fancy word for rebuilding a relationship. And rebuilding, it takes whatever it takes. It, for some people, it's sitting down and have a cup of coffee once, everything's great. For some people, it, it's a friend, it, it, maybe you need to go out golfing all summer. Or, or maybe you need to sit down and commit to have uh, dinner with your wife or your spouse every Tuesday for a month just to work these things out. It takes whatever it takes. And part of whatever it takes is realizing that... Uh, how something appears is always a matter of perspective. What I saw happen and what you saw happen can be completely different. What I intended as a compliment, you might hear as an insult. I, I asked, I have learned long ago that it doesn't matter what I think of a woman's hair. What it matters is what does that woman think of, thinks of her hair, right? Uh, and I, I learned that, and I shall never forget it. But I can completely see happening. If I ask you, Penny, how do you like your hair cut? You, I'm trying to figure out what you think so I don't get in trouble. What you might hear is, he doesn't like my haircut, and he's trying to dance. 
right? And, and that's happened to me. It, it has. And, and that's, I intended one thing and you heard something completely different. And so sometimes it is just simply a matter of miscommunication, of just not... I meant one thing, you heard something completely different, and, and that's you just sit down and drink a cup of coffee. Hey, well, you got a great haircut, Penny. It's wonderful. That, uh, <laughs> sometimes it is just that simple. Now, what happens if, if you think it's a problem and the other person not only doesn't think it's a problem, but is utterly committed to not thinking it's a problem? Well, um, this big one, we'll get to that next week. So that, that's, because <laughs> that, that does happen. That does happen. But when you sit down to rebuild, and, and assuming both parties agree that there is a problem, first, uh, you can't just pretend that you're going to go back the way it was, because something broke in, in, in fixing it. Who here has gone through rehab for a joint or an ankle? I mean, it, it, it's never quite the same afterwards. It can get strong as it was, it can rebuild it, but it's never quite the same. It's the same with the relationships. Once you've, once something has happened, you rebuild it. It's never quite the same, but you can't just pretend, oh, let's just go back to how things were. It's not going to happen. You can't pretend that uh, everything is black and white. It, it, there is never, there's been one situation where one time, and one time only, when the person, there was one person who was the complete victim and, and the other person w was utterly guilty. And that's when Jesus was crucified. Jesus was without sin. He didn't deserve it. And, and he, had, he was without sin. And so there was no, that was black and white. Everything else that ever, has ever happened is all kind of shades of gray, right? I do wrong to someone. You do wrong to me. We all have roles to play in this. There are always two sides to a story. And so we can't just go in there and try to beat up the other person as the, as the person who done me wrong. There's always two sides to a story. And, and so there's a, there's a place to try to make it right. If I, if I run into your car, I better try to help pay your deductible. If, if I say I'm sorry, but I don't try to make it right, do you believe me? And so we, we tr sit down, try to rebuild, try to make it right, and, uh, and then don't do it again. If I run into your car once, please don't run into your car twice. Right? So if, you, if, I, if I say I'm sorry and we sit down, we have coffee, we agree, that was painful, that was hard, and then tomorrow I do it the exact same thing again, that, that's not, no, that, that doesn't work, that doesn't fly. I mean, there's, there's got to be a sense of, if, if we got to move on from these things. So here, those are kind of the, the chunks of rebuilding. We can't assume black and white, sit down, it takes what it takes, uh, try to make it right, don't do it again. These are the parts of rebuilding that are essential to, to putting those rocks down. And, and so where we stand on this is we've talked about the small rocks. Remember, assume the best, pray, and move on. We've talked about the medium rocks. You, you run towards the person you've offended or who has offended you, and you sit down to rebuild it, and, and then the rest of us say, you know what, I'm praying for you, and how's the weather? And then uh, that leaves next week, we're going to talk about the big ones. We're going to talk about the betrayals. We're going to talk about the, the, the problems that can not only weigh down a relationship, but actually destroy them. And how do we handle such burdens? And, and some of the harder questions as well, such as when... When one person just doesn't agree that there is a problem, how do we handle such matters? I want to leave you with uh, a thought by Martin Luther, though, because what he, uh, what he said about all the commands in the Bible is every command in the Bible is actually a promise as well. When Jesus commands, you go and you find the person you wronged, there's a promise that the Holy Spirit makes that possible. When there's the command that if someone has wronged you, you go and you find them and you make it right, there's the promise that the Holy Spirit will support you and move through you and make possible for you to do things that you might have not thought you did. All right? And so as you hear this, this is not just uh, a lecture on the details of how to forgive. This is also, this is, there's a promise here that as we follow Jesus, as we pray, the Spirit moves in us and through us. And we can do all of this, even though we might not think we ever could. You can do it by the grace of God who empowers us all. Amen. It is now...